This is the second half of a video I made on how to clean and whiten skulls uh, like the ones on the wall behind me. If you haven't seen the first part, make sure you watch that. All right, well, we're down in the basement now and we got our table set up here. I got a piece of carpet on it. Um, the next step of this process is to seal that bone. Uh, we've got it gleaming white now. We don't want it to get dirty and we definitely don't want uh, oils from our hand or anything to, to kind of get in that bone and discolor it again. So uh, what we're going to use to seal it with, regular old mop and glow. Pick that up at you know, Walmart or the hardware store or whatever. I'm going to pour a little bit into this cup here. I'm going to use this paintbrush and I'm going to just coat the skull, uh, sop it on there just as wet as you want to get it. Uh, you can't put too much on. I'm going to put it up inside there. I want to try to coat all those surfaces up inside. Um, the Mop and Glow does two things. It seals that bone to keep dirt and stuff from uh, you know, getting on it and uh, discoloring it. It also seals that bone in case there was any you know, in case there was any fleshy material up in these cracks and stuff like right in here. It'll seal all that in and if, if you miss something or the peroxide didn't quite cook all the junk out of there, it'll seal that in and you won't ever have to worry about smell. Um, if you've ever smelled a uh, European mount that was done improperly, um, they can really, really stink. So uh, the peroxide goes a long way toward cleaning everything up. Uh, but this mop and glow is a critical step to, to seal that bone. So uh, with your paint brushes, don't use a super, super cheap paintbrush here because you don't want to be fighting a bunch of bristles and stuff on there. Um, so just keep that in mind. You want to use a brush that's not going to lose a bunch of bristles. So uh, keep the mop and glow off the antlers because uh, we want these antlers after the mop and glow is dry. We're going to come back tomorrow. And we're going to start coloring and we don't want to seal the antlers right now because we want those to take color tomorrow so i'll get busy with this mop and glow this is a real quick process this won't take five minutes and i'll catch you guys up on the next step all right well it's the next day and the uh, mop and glow is dry they got a nice uh, satin sheen to them um, they're both uh, uh, sealed up now so we're ready to move on to the next step and the next step is going to be adding color. You know, we got to recolor these bases. Uh, what the, the biggest thing you notice when the thing's hanging on the wall, I mean, you're kind of looking at the burrs on top there. So that's really why we wanted to, uh, you know, protect this area as much as possible, you know, when we were doing the boil. Because that's, that's really what you're looking at. When that sucker's hanging on the wall like that, you don't notice too much of the back. You don't notice the sides as much. Uh, but in any case, we're going to do a good enough color job where you'll never notice that those were uh, that those were uh, bleached out. So, how we do this color is with Minwax wood finish. Now, I haven't found a better way to do this. Um, so you can again take this advice with a grain of salt, but this is what works well for me. Um, every deer is different. Every set of antlers is different. Um, these two are a real good example of that. You can see how bumpy and lumpy that deer is and how smooth these antlers are. Uh, you can see that's kind of a like a dark chocolate color on some of those uh, bumps there where yeah there's a little bit of that on this one but this one's a lighter color overall. Uh, this one's holding more color. Uh, so this is a darker antler than this one. Um, these two bucks were killed probably about oh, 150 yards apart. So two deer from the same area have two really different uh, antler characteristics. So uh, you'll find some deer with really red antlers, some with really blonde antlers. Um, so anyhow, how you color or what you use to color is going to be dependent on the specific deer. The colors that I recommend that you have available to you, it's going to be hard to read this here, um, Dark Walnut, I don't use this one a tremendous amount, but sometimes it does come in handy. Red Mahogany, Espresso, and Provincial. Now the Provincial is a kind of a light color, light brown, Espresso is a little darker brown, Black Walnut is almost black, and Red Mahogany is red. So when you put this stuff on, you want to put it on really light. And we're going to put it on, we're going to put on uh, 
at different times as well. Like I'm gonna start with a red mahogany. I'm not gonna coat all the antler with that red mahogany. I'm gonna take my Q-tip, I'm gonna shake the can up real good. I'm gonna pop the lid off, lay the lid upside down here, and I'm gonna use Q-tips. Use a whole bunch of Q-tips. I'm gonna, I'll probably end up going through that many per, per skull, uh, per color. So get you a big old box of Q-tips, you're gonna go through a bunch of them. I'm gonna use Q-tip and I'm gonna dab it on the lid just to get up a little bit of color. And I'm just gonna dab, 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 dab color onto these antlers. And I'm gonna let that red, I'm gonna do red. I'm not gonna cover the whole thing with red. I'm just gonna do in spots with the red. And I'm gonna let that dry overnight. And I'm gonna come back uh, tomorrow and we'll hit it with a different color. Um, depending on what they look like and kinda, you know, you kinda gotta get a feel like, and this is this is the artistic end of it. This is, this is the side of it that I will never become comfortable with. Uh, it's just not my personality to do this sort of artsy stuff. So um, you're gonna put on a little bit of red today, let it dry overnight, come back and hit it with, depending on your antlers, I'll probably hit mine with espresso and see how that looks. And then I'll give it another day and I'll probably hit it with provincial. Uh, if you put your colors on too close together, you put them on too heavy or uh, you don't give it enough time to dry between kind of coats. This stuff is really not made to be layered like paint. This is, it's wood stain, so you gotta put it on really light. And if you want each color to stick out, you know, you don't want your colors kind of blending together too much. Um, you gotta put it on really light, because otherwise, if you put this red on today, and then you put that espresso on on top of it tomorrow, the, the I don't know what it is in the stuff, it will kind of, you know, this was, this might be dry overnight. You put that on top of it and that will kind of mush with this. And rather than getting two separate colors next to each other, they just kind of blend together and turn to mud between them. So you don't get that definition of difference in color. I don't know how, how to explain it better. I mean, you can see this antler, you know, in different spots has got, it's got dark there right next to light there. And it's dark up here and then it's almost white over here so just taking that q-tip and dabbing around is actually going to mimic you know the natural colors so um, you don't want your darks to be up on top of the bumps because that's where they're just about white so um, you just got to kind of play with this uh, i will warn you if you get any of that stuff on the white if you drip onto this white do what you can to get it off immediately. Get you a wet rag, um, try to rub it off, try not to smear it all over. Uh, ideally, you don't wanna get it on here and, and if you're careful enough, you can do this without getting any color on the white. Um, but what can happen is if you get a drip on there and it's real noticeable and you can't get it up, you're gonna be using sandpaper and you're gonna have to sand that back off. So that's a big reason we did the mop and glow first, to try to seal that up in case we make any mistakes too, then uh, hopefully we can get any drips up. But you may have to sand it off. Uh, these, these skulls are super duper thick. Right in through here, all this is solid. Um, there's, it's really thick across the top here. You'll never sand through. So, I mean, that's, no, that's not really a concern. Um, but it's just an extra step that you don't want to have to take, you know, sanding it and then re remop and glowing it and everything. So I'm going to get started here. And uh, like I say, I think I'm going to put round, put down the red first and I'm going to put it down deep in all the crevices. Now I'm going to put it real deep. I'm going to try to try to keep it off the burls, the red. I don't know. I'll just kind of play around with it. Um, I will also warn you guys, anywhere there's a break in the bone, See this where it's really, really porous? That is gonna suck up this color and it's almost gonna turn it black. So be very, very sparing with your color. Anywhere there's a break or a crack or anything in the antler, uh, cause it'll really suck it up and it'll make it like a black line. You know, no matter what color you put on there, it's gonna look black when, uh, when it absorbs into that. So just be aware of that. Um, also, I guess something that I didn't touch on before, but I maybe should have. Um, if you got a young deer, a year and a half old buck, a little spike or fork horn or, you know, a little bitty guy, they lose their teeth. 
uh, they lose teeth just like people lose teeth and they typically start at the front like people's do um, now's the time to super glue your teeth back in if you notice that uh, you know one of your teeth um, looks a little shorter than the others um, you know the the new one grows in underneath the old one and it pushes the old one out and when you take all that fleshy material off from your boil and everything uh, you'll have a loose tooth maybe so now's the time if you notice those teeth coming off or um, you know if you caught that tooth and you found it in your pot now's the time to super glue it back on uh, if you're not real worried about it and most guys are not most of the time I don't super glue those back on but you can now would be the time to do it if you made the mistake of not using uh, that super washing soda in your boil and you boiled your head way way too long this is the time now to be gluing in those nose bones again um, actually that probably should have been done before the mop and glow um, so just uh, you know I guess I should have touched on that before but hopefully you're watching this video before you're doing anything to your skull anyhow so uh, regular old super glue I know I got a thing of it here somewhere regular old super glue um, I also keep some little pieces of bone laying around when I'm doing a lot of skulls. This is kind of left over from last season. I keep some pieces of bone laying around. If I was doing a little bitty guy, a, a button buck or something like that, and sometimes the peroxide, you just can't help, but you know, it, it the peroxide will eat that away. You don't have to pressure wash it off. Um, sometimes, you know, if you got big holes in here or whatever, or somebody did some damage, I've had them come in where guys drag them out of the woods. And uh, I had a guy actually bring me one that uh, he drug it out of the woods. He busted the whole side of the face off here. Um, this whole top jaw was broken off and uh, I actually refused to do it because there was no way I was gonna be able to fix that and make it look good. And uh, that guy would have just blamed me for a crappy mount. Um, so I skinned that head out. I said, man, I, I can't do this. You, you've, you've busted this. I mean, he broke the whole, the whole side of the jaw out on that deer. I don't know if he smashed it into a rock, dragging it out or what, but now's the time that you can be making these minor repairs if you have to. Regular old super glue re works really good on this bone. Um, and uh, as a matter of fact, I think I got some teeth laying around here too. Yeah, here's some baby teeth. Um, nine times out of 10, you'll never even notice a baby tooth missing on your uh, on your deer, especially hanging on a wall. You never have any idea, but. Um, so anyhow, there's my long-winded uh, spiel on uh, starting to color, so. Uh, do them one at a time, give it a day or overnight to dry between them, be very sparingly with it, and I'll catch you guys up here as we go. Alright, well here's uh, what it looks like after the first coat of red. I, I hesitate to call it a coat, because uh, again, you don't want to put this stuff on like paint. Put it on real sparingly, real sparse. I didn't get any up here, because I'm going to stick with brown up in there, I think, in that break real sparse in through here just kind of blot just put spots just dots in some places and uh, kind of put some of it up onto the natural color too um, this one didn't take a whole lot of color so that's good because um, less the least you can least you have to recolor the better but uh, so that not much to see there this one here as I'm examining it, you know, it looks like there was a little more red in the thing itself. So I put a little more red on this one and I kind of streaked this one a little bit more where it doesn't have those deep pockets like the other rack does. So I kind of put streaks on this one. And uh, I might have got a little heavy with the red, but we'll see. Um, I try to do it sparingly, but, uh, you know. We can work with this, so that this is a start. That might be a little heavy in through there, but uh, until we get some more color on there and see how they kind of look together, we won't know. So that's the first coat of red. If I gotta come back and do red over top of some browns, I'm okay with that too. So I'm gonna let this sit, and uh, I'm not gonna get in a big hurry here because I don't want my colors to blend together too much. So I'm gonna let this sit and dry good overnight, and I'm not gonna touch it before the next day at least so I'm gonna try to give it almost 24 hours catch you guys up here in a while all right well here we are it's about 24 hours later and the red mahogany is dried and uh, doesn't look a whole lot different than when I put it on 
So uh, the next color we're going to do is espresso. Same thing, we're going to treat it the same way. We're just going to dab it on lightly. Um, I'm going to shake the can up real good. I'm going to use the, I'm going to flip the lid over and the lid's going to be what I work off of. And just Q-tips, dabbing it in the material on the lid and then just dab, dab, dab. Maybe some streaks on this one. I'm going to put down more of the espresso than I did the red mahogany. Red, The red is kind of an accent color. You can tell, I mean, there's a whole lot more kind of a chocolate color on these antlers than there is any red. So uh, we're going to use more espresso on here. And uh, same way with this one. Uh, with this one, more, you know, I'm going to put more dots than I am streaks. Again, just treating them, you know, each one's uh, its own kind of individual uh, challenge. So I'll uh, start with this color and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done here. Well, we're done with the espresso for now. And again, you know, looking straight on, it looks pretty good. Uh, as we scrutinize it, we come around to the back and you still see little hints of the red in there. We're starting to get some brown on here. Um, we're by no means done, so uh, we don't want to get carried away. We don't want to cover everything. Uh, again, you know, there's a lot of different shades of brown in here, so um, started to, you know, we just started to put a little more brown in where there was white. So uh, went over some of the red a little bit, uh, but again, if you kind of mix those colors on top of each other, they don't you don't really get any kind of contrast they just kind of blend together and make make one muddy color so you got to be careful of how much you overlap your colors um, and you want to keep it kind of dry you know like the q-tips got two sides so you'd be dabbing with one side you know put some color on with one side use the other side of your q-tip to kind of rub that color back off and uh, use a lot of q-tips you know q-tips are cheap so um, again every set of antlers is different so you know this these look like you know they're coming along at a different stage uh than the than this other set so a little bit more red on this one you can still see uh but again we're by no means done so it would look i mean from you know from a distance hanging on a wall like that nobody'd ever know but we want it to look really good so we're going to keep on keeping on the next step or the next color is going to be i think we're going to go with provincial next and uh see how that turns out again guys this is this is like an artistic thing this is not something that i'm comfortable with i struggle with this on every set of antlers and uh yeah this is just the best way that i've come up with so far um but you just gotta you gotta put down a little color and then see what it looks like see if you can do some more do a different color go back to another color um it's just it really is you know you just got to keep playing with it unfortunately it's not quick so uh, next color we're going to do is provincial and we'll see what they look like after that all right guys well it's the next day and the espresso dried overnight and uh, actually it's been more than a day it's been about a day and a half probably since i put that espresso on and you can definitely see that uh you, know, you can definitely see still some contrast there from the front to the back so we're going to put on provincial next and that provincial is a lighter brown so that'll probably tone that difference down a little bit i'll uh, get busy with that and i'll catch you up here when it's done well we're done with the provincial and they're getting better there's still ways to go um this one in particular is it's kind of giving me a little fits around this break um, where the where it broke it's kind of jagged down uh, a little further than you know it wasn't a real clean break it looks like it chipped off some of this down here um, and like I said earlier wherever it's chipped or cracked or whatever that draws in that stain it makes it look a whole lot darker so that's kind of giving me fits but I'm gonna let it go for tonight um, this head here is probably coming along a little bit better than that one because this is a more of a slick set of antlers you can see that's all jagged and bumpy over on this one it's harder to get down in in between all those bumps and also the peroxide the peroxide kind of eats at those bumps a little bit and causes uh it kind of causes them to draw in color a little different than just slick bone does so um, this one's coming along a little bit better but 
we're gonna give them uh, we're gonna give them both the night to dry and uh, come back have a look at them tomorrow and uh, see what we got to do to improve them all right it's the next night uh, I think last night we did provincial and I'm still I'm not thrilled with what I'm seeing here um, I just got done putting more color on I went with uh, I opened the provincial back up and I opened up the red mahogany uh, this one here is really giving me fits and the biggest uh, area that's giving me fits is near that break so uh, I'm trying not to get too frustrated with it um, so I did the same thing with this one just put on a little red mahogany again with some provincial which is kind of going against what I try to do and that is not to mix up colors so much because I'm afraid to turn to mud so Right now it looks good. We'll see what it looks like when it dries. So I'm going to give this a day. And uh, I mean, that ain't bad. Hanging on a wall, that's good enough. You know, um, I'm just kind of, I don't know, I'm kind of particular about them. You know, I like, I like to get them down off the wall every now and again and just look at them, you know, and have people handle them and stuff. So, you know, just because it looks good hanging on a wall. Doesn't mean it's going to look good in your hands when you flip it around and look at the back of it. You know, it's it's not terrible, but man, I sure would like to see it get better. We'll see what they look like tomorrow. All right, well, here we are a few days later, and this rack, this is the uh, more or less normal rack. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to quit fooling with it. Um... You know, overall the colors match pretty good. I'm real happy with how the stain and everything worked on this one. Uh, it's a little bit bland over here, I guess, for lack of a better word. I probably could go with a little bit darker red. Um, I may touch this up yet, but I'm, I'm tempted to just leave this one alone. Um, so you know, when it's when it's hanging on the wall, you'll be looking at it like that, and uh, you know, until you get it down and. and flip the thing over and look at the back side you'll never see that kind of a bland color but that's this rack so it's okay i may touch that up a little bit yet this rack here i'm not happy with um i just cannot get these colors right where this is broken it's really gnarly and, and uh rough and it's drawn up that paint i mean it it looks gray now uh since it's dried you know so this is unacceptable and uh, I've never had one do this to me before. I've seen something like this on them before, but I've never had one that just absolutely looked like crap. So uh, I'm going to drastic measures here. I'm switching things up. Like I said, I've always had trouble with recoloring these things. The wood stains is the best thing I've found. It's uh, I've always been kind of afraid to try anything else, but uh, this is unacceptable. So. I'm getting drastic here. Um, I ordered this set off of Amazon a few days ago. I watched some videos online uh, of a guy recoloring some reproduction antlers, and I'm going to kind of use his process here. I think probably because I've already got color on here, I'm hoping I can add some some reds to that, but I don't know. So I've kind of lined up what I what I'm going to be using here. I've got scarlet. Uh, yellow ochre, uh, burnt sienna, raw sienna, raw umber, burnt umber, Payne's gray, and maybe black if I need it. So uh, I should probably drag a white in here. Also, I'm going to dilute this stuff down really, really light. I mean, that wood finish goes on kind of like water. Uh, I'm going to put this on about like that too. I don't want to get carried away with painting this thing. So I'm going to dilute it with mineral spirits. I've already poured a little mineral spirits little mineral spirits here in this cup I'm gonna use these brushes so they're teeny tiny little things and I'm gonna be as meticulous as possible I'm gonna definitely keep it off of that white and I'm gonna mix it up on this little plastic tray here I put a white background down so I can see kind of what I'm doing this is my first experience with paint so I'm gonna get at it and I'll show you guys as we go here well, I've been at this for, oh, I don't know, about 20 minutes or so, and you can see the 
the colors that uh, I was using, I didn't use much white, and uh, I didn't use any red at all. I dabbled in it and then said, you know what, that ain't for me. So, uh, uh, mostly the uh, ochres and siennas um, and the uh, umbers. So, that'll give you an idea if you guys are looking for uh, ideas on what paints to use on your deer. Um, I'm going to quit digging on this one. This is... Uh, I'm, I'm a whole lot happier with it now than I was when I started with a paint. Uh, again, looks real good, you know, head on as you roll it around. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy with the colors that I got in there up on the break, that kind of a reds and browns up in there. Um, I quit before I got into the center part of the, uh, the bone. You can see it gets, uh, the pores are larger. So I tried to stay kind of uniform on that break. You know, the little stuff was colored already naturally. So uh, up under here, I got it lightened up with some browns and stuff. It's not going to show up on camera. I've been rolling this thing around in my hand for, I don't know, 10 minutes trying to think what I can improve. And I just cannot come up with anything. So um, it's, it's just a gnarly rack. You know? I think that looks pretty good to be honest with you so I'm gonna quit digging I don't want to get myself in any more trouble the more paint I put on there the more trouble I'm gonna get myself into uh, I'm pretty happy with that other side this one here again I was rolling it around in my hands for a few minutes and I just really I just don't think I can improve it um, I mean it doesn't look bad so uh, I'm happy with this um, you know it's just the stain worked out great on this one, but I'll tell you from the painting that I've done, you know, this little bit on this rack, I, I'm i going to go with the paint next time before I uh, try any stain. I might, I might, uh, I would be more inclined to try painting one again. So I'm going to try to get another rack. It's uh, still rifle season here in indiana we still got muzzleloader yet to go and late archery a lot of guys are still killing deer i'm gonna try to talk one of my buddies out of a if they kill a little buck or something you know somebody's got one sort of throwaway racks i might uh, talk somebody out of one of them and uh, just play with it you know um my nephews heck they may even want to go out yet i'm not sure they didn't really express a whole lot of interest in hunting this year so um but it'd be nice to see them get a get a deer and I'd be tickled to death to be able to make a mount for them, you know, like this. So, well, there we go. That's what it's going to look like hanging on a wall. Um, this was, uh, again, this was mine. So I went ahead and hung it up, give you guys an idea what they look like hanging on a wall. This is how I like to do them. I don't like any plaque or anything. Um, I find a, a stud and uh, always screw into a stud, but I'll just use a piece of uh, light gauge wire. So just screw right into a stud, use a piece of, uh, yeah, let me get it down here on the floor right? get two hands on it. Use a piece of light gauge wire, go through there, and then just make you a little loop. And uh, you kind of catch that loop with that screw head. I don't use a whole lot of wire, I don't like it sticking way out where you notice it hanging on the wall. So that's as simple as it gets. That's how I, I mean, that's how I like to hang mine. I don't have very many of them, but I do got a couple of them in here like that. I uh, was doing shoulder mounts and I uh, started well, I started with that one years ago and I really liked it and then I started doing them for other you know some buddies and stuff and a few of them for dad and then I ended up killing that one a few years later I got this one this year and that one's dad so that's the one that we had all that trouble with but uh, I tell you it turned out pretty nice after that paint dried and everything um, I'm really happy with how the colors look on that so uh, I, I really want to get my hands on another one and uh, use paint rather than stain. Just try paint right off the bat for it. So, guys, I hope I helped you here. Uh, if I did, click that thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos of me messing with deer or hunting or mostly I work on tractors and four-wheelers and stuff, uh, click that subscribe button. You get to see all them other videos I post. Until uh, the next video, keep on tinkering.